Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Board Games Hitting My Table. This is for the first half of April 2022. I've got quite a few games here to talk about so I better crack on. And if you're not familiar with this series, it's where I talk about all the games I've been playing. Um, but these are not new to me, so these are all games I've covered in some capacity before. So starting off with a three-player game of Ohanami. Uh, this game, I think a lot of people know about it now, but if not, you should look at this one if you like a uh, a filler style game that's, that uses drafting and almost set collection or point scoring. This one has one of the coolest uh, mechanisms that I've seen in, in a long time, really, um, as when you draft, you're putting them on these columns, um, but all these cards are uniquely numbered and you have to either place higher than your highest card or lowest than your lowest card. So sometimes you're given a bunch of cards and you have to make these big jumps in numbers, which will restrict you going forward. Uh, this game where you had an ultra tight game, I think I took a... A bit more of a balanced approach. I tried to get those blue cards in early to get them scoring three times. Um, and I think uh, we ended up scoring within a couple of points of each other. You know, so a very tight game that I just narrowly didn't win. So that is Ohanami. Still one of the best filler games out there. I think it is excellent. We also played a three-player game of Cabo. Um, so this one is a simple memory style game. I actually re reviewed this one pretty recently, if you want to check that one out. And I always say this is one of those games that should not be as good as it is, as you're basically trying to deplete your numbers as low as possible. And then basically call Cabo, where everybody has to reveal their cards, and whoever's got the lowest, um, basically, well, if you correctly called that you would be the lowest, you score nothing, but everybody else scores their points. But if you incorrectly called that you had the lowest, then you score double your points. And you're basically trying to get, keep your score as low as possible. I have a weirdly good win rate of this game, despite it being a lot of luck. Um, but uh, there was a couple of calls there that weren't quite right and ended up costing people double the amount of points. But very fun experience. Again, one game that just should not be as good as it is. And it continues to live up to that moniker. Uh, you also played a three-player game of Point Salad. This one, a true filler game. I always play this one going through the motions now. Picking up your different um, veg here and then um, scoring them based on these different cards you can have. You know, scoring for different criteria, like for every carrot you score two points. And you're just drafting from this pool, constantly changing. Um, it's fine, I've got no issue with it at all. Very quick and it is, you know, it fits that filler role quite nicely. Also played a, another game of Q-Birds at three players. This game, I'm really struggling to put my finger on where this one lies for me because I do enjoy it. I think it's it's very good. I'm not quite sure if it's a long-term collection, you know, remainer because I do think there's better games out there, but it's sometimes nice to take a bit of a sidestep and play something a bit different. And this game is familiar in the way it works, but it's just different enough as you're playing these bird cards from your hand but when you play them, you have to play all of them and you're basically trapping these other cards and add, adding them into your kind of scoring points and you're trying to collect or you, you can spend an action to display them all in front of you and you're trying to either collect, I think it's two sets of three or one of seven different types of birds. Um, and I like it. I think it's going to stay around for a little bit longer, but it always seems to again, be on that fence of is it is it really that good or is it just good? Um, but yeah, that's Q-Birds. I do like it, but I'm not quite sure I love it. But a filler game that I do love is Coloretto. So I haven't played Coloretto in a long, long time. And I managed to get this one to the table again in a two-player game. And this game does work remarkably well at two players because there is a variant where normally you'd play these cards in these different columns. Um, and you have like, you can play like three, I think it's three cards per column. But in the two player version, you have a column that can only keep one card, a column that can keep two cards and one that can keep three cards. And that makes the game feel very tight, which is good. And then you're trying to collect these sets of these chameleons, but whenever you collect sets that don't, or aren't in your highest three sets, they count as negative points. Um, and then you're using that by kind of drawing cards out and you can either take a column or add to the columns, but sometimes you are ruining your sets by doing so. Uh, brilliant game, almost an essential, and it's excellent. That is, uh, that is Colorado, never fails to impress. Going into some bigger games now, we finally managed to get Power Grid back to the table. So I've been wanting to get this one get back to the table for a long, long time, because I probably haven't played it in about a year. And um, I, I love that. We played a three-player game, which I, I know is not the optimal player count. It's probably best with a player or two more. 
Um, but I still enjoy it because I think it keeps the game moving a bit quicker. Um, so this is one of the traditional, one of the classic economic style games, one of Friedman Friesen's, well, he definitely his most popular title. As you are basically um, bidding for these power stations, and these power stations convert resources into energy, which will let you power these different um, power plants that you put on around the map here. Um, but this game is so mathematical, as you have to very carefully um, plan out how much money you have to build these routes, how much you can pay to bid for. And you have this resource market where certain resources are kind of increasing or decreasing depending on supply and demand. We had a very tight game of this one. Um, and I think it came down to me powering one more power station than my opponent. They made a bit of a mistake where they were factoring money, where money is only a tie break, and they really did need to focus on getting that extra um, power plant energized. And I saw that and um, managed to capitalize on that and took the win. But very tense game. Um, I love the I love the money management in this game and knowing what you can pay for. Like the supply and demand market is so engaging. And I think this is a classic. And I'm almost tempted to get the deluxe version of this one because I think this is a game that's going to stay in my collection. And although I don't play it terribly often, I would like to have a nice version of it rather than this one that I picked up pre-owned and where my board is a bit warped and stuff. But I love the game. Um, it's very good. But another game I have to be in the right mood to play, really. Um, and that might, you know, might be a bit safe for me picking up a more expensive version if I'm not going to play it that often. But I still love it. That is Power Grid. Also played a, another game of Concordia, and we played using the Crete map. And that's actually the first time I've ever played Concordia using a different map other than the ones in the base box. So you know, despite me loving this game, I've never actually played any of the expansion content. Um, I thought it was good. It's a nice tight little map where you, um, you're definitely um, getting in each other's way very quickly. I normally take the... Um, the Saturn route, where you get more points based on how many different continents you're in or regions you're in. Um, and this one, I went for a different approach. I went for the one where you score for kind of uh, each of your different types and also just the pure amount of different buildings you have apart from the brick ones. And I managed to get a bit of a monopoly on the different types um, because I kept on exploiting those cards where you don't have to pay the additional fee to um, collect the new cards into your hand. And that managed to pay off for me. Um, and I was successful. Um, so I think I had a bit of a dry run in winning um, Concordia. I hadn't won in quite some time, so it was nice to come back and bounce back with a victory. Um, but this game is as good as it gets. It's fantastic. One of the best Euros ever made. And um, I pretty much never turned down a game of this one because it is that good. And uh, we had another good game of it. And I've, it was nice exploring a different map. So that is Concordia. We also played a three-player game of Las Vegas Royale. So I was actually surprised to read that I hadn't played this game in probably about six months. And... When I first got this one, I, I played this one almost every game session I had because I was that blown away with it. I still absolutely love it. Um, and I was, it was just surprising to read that I hadn't played it in that much time. Got it back to the table. And, um, you know, despite us all kind of being a bit, feeling a bit low energy, this one gets back to the table. Instantly, everyone is hyped and straight into the fun and loving it. And uh, that's why I love this game. It's just a, a pure joy experience. It's brilliant as you're rolling these dice, trying to control these different casinos and get the monies on them. But some of these casinos have little mini games that change from round to round, where you can do like a, a Price is Right game, or you can get these different bonuses, or um, even use blockers and things. It's so good, it's so variable, so punchy and engaging, and I think it is just an absolute triumph of a game, and uh, it does strike that balance between, uh, just, just appealing to everybody really, because you can play this approach just quite gamey, you know, in a, in a gamey way and try to use those more involved little mini games, or you can just do the kind of simple dice rolling fun. And it's just so versatile and I adore it. That is Las Vegas Royale. Still got quite a few to get through here. We played another game of 10, just to kind of calibrate our thoughts on it because I was expecting to love this game um, because I love Pushy Luck, I love set collection. This game didn't really land with us the first time we played it, but we wanted to play it again just to just to check our thoughts and make sure we got our thoughts in order. And it sadly fell the same way again. Now, I think the big thing wrong with this game is that it has an auction mechanism that is completely thumbed in. It doesn't feel like it fits the rest of the game at all. And all of a sudden you're, you're doing your pushy luck thing and then you draw one of these wild cards out and then it stops for an auction. And it makes it feel so stop and startish that it doesn't really get rolling. 
But, it, it, you know, it's fine. I just think there's a lot better set collection games out there and there's a lot better bidding games out there. And it just doesn't really merge the two in a, in a great way. So I think it's, again, I think it's a, it's a decent game, but I think the competition is too strong for it and it doesn't quite hold its own, but it's fine. We also played a, another two-player game, as that was the only player count you can play with Kaching. So Kaching is um, a game that came very really very high on my um, my game of the month last month. Um, a game that nobody talks about. This is a very simple little economic drafting game. As you have these columns of cards, um, and then you're basically drafting from these columns of cards, and then you can trade them in together when you have a matching pair, and you multiply the scores together, and you're basically trying to get a profit by doing that. Now, normally this game is so cutthroat that you end up pretty much leaving the game with next to no money. Um, however, we had a strange game where we were absolutely showered in money that we actually ran out of money from the bank. Um, so it was probably the highest scoring game of Kaching that we've ever, we've ever played. But it's quite interesting to see how the game plays out. And the drafting in this game is so good. And um, definitely a, uh, a great two-player game if you're looking for something a bit different for your collection. Also played another game of Rajas of the Ganges, the Dice Chalmers. We played this at two players. And this is quite an interesting one because I went into this game um, after having not played it for quite some time and I'd lost my almost desire to play it so much. So I thought I'd get it back to the table, um, give it another go, maybe give it a final, you know, a final go off the shelf before selling it and moving it on. Um, but I ended up loving it and um, remembering why or reminding myself why it was in my collection because we had a blast with it. This one, I think, controversially, I think I might prefer this one to Hadrian's Wall. So this is probably probably my favorite Roll and Write style game. I think it does everything that the board game Raj of the Ganges does, but probably better, smoother and faster, and even more satisfying as you build these combos. This is a great Roll and Write, um, and don't be put off by it being you know uh, a duplication of a board game. The actual game here is utterly brilliant, and I would recommend it highly. Uh, we also played a game of Hex Roller. So talking about Roll and Writes, this is a more traditional older school style Roll and Write as you are trying to uh, basically um, collect these numbers and then you are building these chains and things. You're trying to fill up these different hexes to get points based on the majorities. Um, so very traditional, simple, um, more of a simple style Roll and Write game. And we actually played using some of the expansion maps, which I actually really liked. There's some different vari variants in where you could score. And um, this game is one of those games that I would happily play any time, really. I never really feel object, or, no, object to playing this one because it is so simple. It has just enough going on to be interesting, but even if you're tired or not really in the mood, then it's still an enjoyable experience. That is Hex Roller. We also played a three-player game of the Castles of Burgundy. Um, and we played using the, I think it's the Anniversary Edition the slightly more vamped up one with the keys on the front um, and we enjoyed it i thought it was a very good game i, ha I haven't played it in in a little time and you know seven is one of my favorite designers so it was nice to go back and revisit it i mean it still feels weird for me to play the um to play the anniversary edition because i'm so familiar with this version and the way that everything looks and the building and things and i think the other one just i don't know it just doesn't click with me yet despite me playing it a couple of times because again because i'm so familiar with this classic one um, but i love the game we had a very very tight game um, all the way until the end where one of the players, my opponents, invested in a lot of those yellow endgame scoring tiles, which made them pull away for the victory. But, you know, still very good experience, and um, you can't really go wrong with the Castles of Burgundy. We also played a three-player game of Pasha. So we've only had this game in the collection for a couple of months now. This is like a, a Yahtzee variant, really, as you're just simply trying to roll, um, I think it's five dice, Try to get the best combination as you can. You know, try to get five, uh, like five of the same number, or maybe two pairs or something, and get the best as you can. And the only interesting thing about this game really is the fact that you do choose the points that you're willing to play for when it comes to your turn. So if you're first, you're taking a bit more of a gamble. But if you're last, then you know what everybody else has rolled before you actually commit your points. That is quite cool. The rest of it is just roll and see what happens. Really, it's quite it's quite dull to be honest. That is Pasha. You know, it's fine. Uh, some more dice rolling goodness with Rumble Nation. Now, this is a game that I'm still really enjoying. Now, this one did rank quite highly last month. Um, and you are basically trying to um, control these regions. So it's a more of a traditional um, area majority style game. 
you're rolling three dice and you're putting them into a pair and a single. The pair is going to show which region you go into and the single one is going to show how many cubes you put in there. And the cool thing about this game is that once everybody's placed all their cubes, you resolve one each at a time. But once you resolve one, if you win it, not only do you get the victory points, but also you spit two more cubes out into each adjacent region that hasn't been resolved yet. So it has this kind of like chaining reaction thing that's so different that I haven't seen before. And that played a big part in this game where there was one key region that was very low, low numbered, so it had a big influence on the other regions. And um, it was actually my mum who claimed that region and it ended up influencing all the adjacent ones and she went, managed winning the game. So um, yeah, it's a very good experience in 30 minutes. It has that cool crescendo where you build, 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 resolve and it ends. So um, yeah, very good game arc for Rumble Nation and I really enjoy this one and I think it should be more revered. Um, shame it's not so widely available. Moving on then, we have the search for Planet X. So I hadn't played this game in a long time since we first got this one into the collection, but I had a bit of an urge to play it. Um, I suggested playing this one with my, with my brother um, because you know, I enjoyed it the first time and I thought, you know, I'm in the mood for some deduction. And I enjoyed this one as well. Um, so this is a kind of an app-driven, more traditional um, deduction style games. You're trying to work out where Planet X is, basically by working out all this logic puzzle where things can and can't be. Um, the way the app works in this game is stellar, really, um, as you are constantly kind of leaked clues. You can guess on different parameters, thinking, you know, how many how many asteroids are there between regions three and six? And maybe it'll say, you know, one. And you know for a fact that there's only one somewhere else, so you can tick things off and things. So it has that cool thing. Um, this game, we did make some big mistakes. Um, so I think one time I ticked off the wrong thing, thinking I, it was concrete knowledge, and it wasn't. And I actually worked that out and managed to backtrack on myself and fix that, which could have gone horribly wrong, um, but it didn't. Um, so yeah, we did make a few mistakes there. Um, the scoring in the game, I'm not 100% sold on, because even if you work things out perfectly, you can still end up losing because somebody did it quicker than you, even if they got some things wrong. But maybe that's something I just need to get my head around. But I think the game is great, um, and I enjoyed it a lot. Again, so for, that is uh, The Search for Planet X. We also played a four-player game of Witchstone, so introduced this to new two new people who haven't played this before, and I think it went down well. Um, I think they enjoyed the combo, you know, the comborific nature, uh, nature of this game. Um, this game, this is Riley Knizia's well, one of his most recent games, and one of my favourite games from last year actually. And I played this quite a few times now, and every time I I love it. I think it's fantastic. I love the simple puzzle here, as you're placing these tiles down, trying to collect the chains together. But I also like the mini game nature of things, as you you know dip and dive into all the different areas, score points and combo things. But our game was quite interesting because we all took a very different approach. Um, like someone went for the pentagram, someone went for the magic wand, someone went for the more the gem strategy. I can't remember who won, but we all had a good time. And um, so yeah, this one's going from strength to strength, really. And um, I can't really see it leaving my collection any time. So that is Witchstone, a very cool game that's almost brought a resurgence back to Rhino Knizia. We also played a four-player game of Savannah Park. So this game, I had, I played this a lot when I first got it. Um, then it went a few months without me playing it. Got it back to the table because I wanted to introduce it to some people who hadn't played it before. And it went down very well. Um, I think this game is so good. It's ultra frustrating at times because you have this almost like a bingo mechanism and you're trying to shift these different tiles around to put these animals in the right sets. But if there's not the gap there and somebody calls that animal, then you're gonna to have to just basically put it somewhere else and hope for the best. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of missed opportunities here, but that's all part of the fun because you'll never really have the perfect game. But this is a brilliant family weight game. I mean, you know, if you do want something that's versatile to play with younger children, but still be puzzly and difficult to solve. So even if, even if you want to play it with your gamer friends, then you're still going to get a lot of enjoyment from this one. Um, and, you know, Kramer and Keesling are the best at what they do. And I think Savannah Park is a triumph. So yeah, another very good game of Savannah Park. And I'm pretty sure all the other people enjoyed that one as well. Um, so just going to the final few games here now, we played another game of Peep Mats. So another one a bit like 10. I wasn't quite sure what to make of this one. Um, I, I liked it, but I was comparing it to um, Pinchback and Riddle's other games, you know, Stellar and Sub Astral. I don't think this one is as good. I think that's that additional play um, 
did confirm that. I do not like some of the negative things you take in this game. Like sometimes you'll have these um, these squirrel cards or these blackbird cards, and they can completely randomly decimate your your points that you've acquired throughout. And I understand people might find that fun. It just seemed to rub me the wrong way, and I think I'm not going to keep hold of this one after all. I have recorded a review of it, so um, maybe it will drop before or after this video. I'm not sure, but keep an eye out for it. That's uh, Pete Matt's good game, not as good as the others. Uh, we also played a three-player game, or was it a four-player game, of Boom Muntu. So this was a game I truly haven't played for a long, long time. It was a, I think it was a Kickstarter game from a couple of years ago. Simple abstract style game that's wonderfully produced. Um, as you're just hopping from these different tiles, um, using these animal powers, and then trying to collect these animals for kind of majority bonuses. The twist in this game is that when you last land on certain tiles, then you can actually manipulate the scoreboard meaning that some animals are worth more than others. And you, of course, want to tailor, up, tailor that to benefit yourself. Um, I think it's pretty, I think I just think it's a pretty mediocre game. I don't think it's terribly exciting. Um, I can see why people would like it, but it just feels a bit dated to me and doesn't really do anything tremendously different despite that scoring mechanism, which I do like. But yeah, I think it's time for this one to go. That is Boo Muntu. And finally, the uh, last game, and probably my favourite, best or last, is I finally managed to get Lorenzo Il Magnifico back to the table after a long time. So we played a two-player game of this one. And, you know, this one has been one of my favourite games for many, many years. You know, it's been a top three ranks, or I think it's maybe just fallen out of my top three this year. Um, well, probably, probably my favourite, or one of my favourite worker placement games, one of my favourite engine building style games. Um, as you are acquiring all these different cards and then a certain spot will let you kind of activate all those cards and get a huge surplus of resources. Um, playing at two player really does throw the game on its side as those engine building um, benefits are so restrictive and there's only actually one available of each type. So you need to get in there quickly, but sometimes you want to get that extra card to add to the engine before you get there. So very, very tight space. And we did play with the expansion uh, with the with that fifth column, which I think is definitely necessary to spice things up a bit and to stop just to add a bit more variety in the different cards that come out because there is a big variety when it comes to that fifth column rather than the preset ones in those other columns. But there's nothing about this game I don't like. I think it's one of the best games ever made. And going back to revisit in the old favourites after playing so many other games is always great when you really realise why they are your favourites. And uh, yeah, we had a great time with this one. And you know, I played it with my mum, and she, you know, she's getting into more involved Euro games, and this is even one of her favourites, um, which kind of is nice to nice to hear when um, when you know when people you play with enjoy it as much as you do. So that is Lorenzo Il Magnifico. So there we go, a big bunch of games this month. So we managed to get a lot played, and I um, even managed to get a lot of new games played. So be sure to check out that um, game in, game of the month when it comes to the start of next month. So yeah really good gaming recently so i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too and uh, for everyone else i'll see you next time on chairman of the board bye now